you should see a welcome screen and your name appears at the bottom. Please let us know if you don't see the welcome screen. Now click the next button, the bottom right of the screen, to proceed to the first sample passage. You may need to scroll down to the bottom of the screen to see the next button. Before you begin reading the passage, listen as I describe the screen. For the Grade 7 reading test, the reading passages will initially appear on the screen without the questions. On the right-hand side of the screen is a scroll bar. Now scroll down slowly, either by clicking the down arrow of the scroll bar or by clicking and dragging the scroll bar. When reading a passage, always make sure that you scroll down and read the entire passage. Practice scrolling the practice window. At the bottom of the screen, you will see the next button in the right corner. You will not see the next button until you've scrolled down to the end of the question or passage. You will click this button to move to the next question or passage. Make sure you only click the next button one time. If you double click or click more than one time while the page is loading, you may skip a question. Click the next button and you will now see the reading passage on the top of the screen and the first question on the bottom of the screen. You can click and drag the dividing line in the middle of the screen to give more or less space for the passage or the question. You can scroll up and down on the right side of the screen. The bottom center of the screen shows the question number and your name. This practice test has only nine questions. When you take the actual test, there will be more questions. In the bottom left corner is the back button. This button can be used to move to a previous question or passage. Now look at the question. To select an answer, you will click the bubble beside the answer choice or click anywhere on the answer choice. Click the bubble next to letter A and the first answer choice is selected. Now select answer choices C and D to see how your answer changes. The reset button can be used to remove the answer selected. If you select an answer and then decide you want to leave the answer blank, clicking reset will remove your answer. For question 1, click answer choice A. Now click the reset button. For question, the, oops, the mark next to answer choice A disappears. My apologies for that. In the bottom right corner is the review button. This feature allows you to flag a question that you might want to review at a later time. Click the review button and the word review turns yellow and a red check mark appears. At any time you can go back to the questions that you flagged for review. You can also access the questions marked for review on the item review screen by clicking the go to button. After reviewing a question, click the review button again and the red check mark disappears. For now, let's leave this question flagged for review. Below the reset button is the go to button. Click this button. This takes you to an item review screen which shows the question numbers, whether the questions have been answered, and whether the questions have been flagged for review. Clicking on a question number will take you to that question. Reading passages are also indicated on this screen. When you get to the end of the test, review the item review screen to ensure that all questions have been answered. The item review screen also includes the submit button. Once you submit the test, it cannot be restarted. So only click the submit button once you are completely finished with the test or when we instruct you to do so. Click question one to return to the first question. Now I'll describe several tools that may help you with the computer based test and you will practice using them. At the top of your screen, you will see several icons that open the various tools you can use during the test. Click the first icon in the toolbar, which is the pointer tool. The pointer is the tool used to select a response. 
Anytime you need to turn off a tool, click the icon for that tool again or click the pointer icon. The second icon in the toolbar is the Eliminate Choice tool. You can use this tool to cross out answer choices that you have eliminated as possible correct answers. Now, click anywhere on Answer Choice A. You should see an X through Answer Choice A. Click Answer Choice B and an X appears through this choice also. Click Answer Choice A again and the X disappears. Now, turn off the Eliminate Choice tool by clicking the icon again. If you want to select an answer that you have eliminated, remove the X by clicking it. A pop-up window will ask you if you want this choice to be your answer. You can click Yes or No. Now, turn the Eliminate Choice tool back on by clicking the icon again. Practice eliminating choices and removing the X's. Now, click the third icon on the toolbar, which is the Highlighter tool. You can use this tool to highlight portions of a reading passage or a question. To highlight, click at the top left corner of the word that you want to highlight and drag the highlighter over the words until you get to the bottom right corner of the words you want to highlight. Practice highlighting words and phrases in the passage. Click the fourth icon in the toolbar, which is the Eraser tool. You can use the Eraser tool to remove highlighting and to erase an X from an eliminated choice. To erase highlighting with the Eraser tool selected, click anywhere in the highlighted area. The highlighting will disappear. Practice using the Eraser tool to remove highlighted areas or eliminated choices. Now turn off the eraser tool by clicking the icon again. Because the eliminate choice, highlighter, and eraser tools use the cursor, you cannot select an answer while these tools are active. Click the fifth icon in the toolbar, which is the notepad icon, and a notepad appears in a pop-up window. Now practice typing words in the notepad. If you want to make notes on a particular question or passage for later reference, you can type them into this window. There's a new notepad for each question. To view your notes, you will need to return to the passage or question where you type the note and then click the notepad icon. You can move the notepad around on the screen. You can add notes. To close the notepad, click the X or the red circle in the top corner of the notepad. Now practice opening and closing the notepad. Now click the last icon, which is the Help button, and a drop-down menu will appear with a list of tools. Select the highlighter. A pop-up window with a description of the tool will be displayed. Click Next on this little pop-up window to see how the tool works. Use the buttons at the bottom to go back to see what is next, to replay the demonstration, or to close the window. Close the Help window. Now, click the Go To button and click Reading Passage 1. At home, please work through all nine practice questions and practice using the tools. We'll post the answers for the practice test on our website. Our last thing will be to demonstrate how you will exit the test if you need to leave the room for an extended period of time during the actual test. One way is to click the X or the red circle in the top corner. 
a pop-up window will appear and ask you to confirm that you want to exit the test. For today, click No, Return to the Test. On the day of the test, you might click Yes, Exit the Test. But now, we'll demonstrate how you'll submit the test when you are finished. If you're not already on the Item Review screen, click the Go To button and go to the Item Review screen. From the Item Review screen, you would click the Submit button. A pop-up window will appear and it will ask you to confirm that you want to submit the test. Remember that once you have clicked this button, you cannot return to the test. If you're pr finished practicing, click Yes, Submit My Test. You'll be asked to confirm this decision. Click Yes, and on the following screen, click Close.